Well, welcome to this edition of Christian Connections. Uh, you know, this is a wonderful week. We're in the holiday season, and uh, we're going to be talking about those things and more. Uh, with us tonight, Danham Hanna. He is on the end over there next to me, Dr. David Taylor. Board member, thank you for coming. And of course, thank you for coming. Sheila Hodgkins is here with us to uh, help us uh, with music and praise and witnessing for Jesus, right? Yes, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. That is the key expression. Of course, uh, you know uh, Lee Avely, he's a chaplain and uh, he's here to uh, bring his expertise to add to the discussion uh, of uh, where we're going tonight. Now, where we are going is, uh, well, we're going to start talking about grudges and, uh, and God. What's God have to do with grudges? Uh, next, uh, we're going to have some great music. Who's uh, performing tonight? Well, we're having the Rotarus and the Usuries oh, who are going to give us special music. Great. Friends we're, of LLBM. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. The second message, Dr. David Taylor. Uh, he's going to talk about tis the season. Now, tis the holiday season, or is it other seasons that he's talking about? Uh, we're going to find out that and more on this edition of Christian Connections. Uh, but uh, first of all, it's uh, just about time to get the music on the road. Here's Sheila with more information about the song and the performance. Sheila? Well, we are going to hear from Joshua Rotaru and Tabitha and Thomas Ussery. And they are going to be playing Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. As you know, if you were paying attention, that was O Come All Ye Faithful. We love that Christmas hymn. So I hope you enjoyed that, and we're going to look forward to hearing them later on in the program. Well, it really is a season, isn't it? It is. <laughs> well, this kind of music is always uh, good to get you in the mood. But let's get in the mood for grudges. Here's Gadam Hanna with a story of God at holding grudges. The question is, and here's the question he's going to ask you, does God hold a grudge? 
Let's find out from Gannon Adam right now. Well, thank you, Marlon. Uh, does God hold a grudge? Uh, I personally don't think so. Uh, some people will say, but, but Gannon, God says, vengeance is mine. Well, that means God holds a grudge. Uh, I think he maybe holds a grudge against the wicked, but not the righteous, not the believers. God throughout the generations is always with his children, always blessing them, always guiding them, helping them through all kind of trials, helping them to get through the toughest times. He's there to discipline. He's there to guide. He's there to bless. So I'll share a story with you. Uh, something happened to me when I was about 25 years old. I was just newly wed. Uh, I had a beautiful wife. Um, we're still married till this day. I'm 63, so you can do the math, how many years we've been married. Uh, if you have a calculator, you can figure it out, folks. But uh, uh, that's not the point. Um, the point is, uh, we were happily married couple. And on one weekend, we decided to go out with our parents. Mostly it was my mom, my brothers, their spouses, and, uh, and some of their children. We decided to go to Galveston Beach. We lived in Houston at the time, and Galveston Beach was about 60 miles away. We prepped food, and we were all excited to go there, having family time at the beach. And we got there. We laid everything down, the umbrellas, the tables, that we took with us, the folding tables, um, ice boxes with sandwiches and cold drinks. It was just really, really wonderful time. Uh, I still remember that day as if it was yesterday. And then there are reasons. I'm going to talk to you why. In those days, I was in sports. I was very athletic. I was strong. And I was very capable of uh, being uh, physically challenging to people of my size and my, and my age. And as I was watching people all around the beach area, in the water, playing with their kids, and some are swimming a little further out, my eyes caught few other young people further out in the deep past the normal line or the normal line zone. And I thought, hey, you know what? I can go as far as they are. Maybe I can go even further. So without telling anyone why I was going to go in the water or where I was going to go, I just disappeared, got in the water, and started swimming my way to where those young people were. And it was a little way from the shore. I got close to them. I swam up to them. We talked. We had a few words. And I thought to myself, huh, I can even do better. So I swam further and further out, and I get a little bit carried away. And then I look back, and then I realize, whoops, how far I am now. I look back, the ones that I approached, the farthest ones out, I was having a hard time seeing them because the water kind of swells up like this, and it goes up and down. And when I make it on a down swell, I don't see them. And when it takes me up, I see their heads. And the people on the beach were harder to see. And I realized at that time that I made a mistake. And then I thought, all right, I need to start swimming back. And I start swimming back. But for some reason, the swells kept pushing me back in the deep. And I tried harder. And the harder I tried, the further it threw me out in the deep. And I was now exhausted. I was in a panic mode. Uh, body start aching, muscles are burning, and I thought, I can do it. I can still do it. So I tried harder, and the harder I tried, the less effective I became, and the water swells just kept carrying me back. And I knew it right there, I'm in deep trouble. I knew that I don't stand a chance anymore. And in my mind, quickly I start thinking about how my mom's going to be devastated to lose her youngest son how my young, young uh, newlywed wife is going to be a widow only after a few months of our marriage. I thought of a lot of things, remorse in life, uh, but panic starts setting in when I start throwing up or coughing up the water. I start choking on it, and I can taste this, the salt of the sea in my mouth. It was very bitter, and I knew I was done. 
So I cried out to the Lord, three things. Help my family with their grief as they lose me. Make my death painless because I was sure I'm going down. And third, unless, Lord, you want to help me and get me out of this mess. And uh, in a panic and still water getting into my mouth and I'm just no longer able to float, there's a very calm spirit just set on me. Very calm spirit, calm me down and allowed me just to float on my back. And I was floating on my back. I started to realize that this was a great spirit, a spirit of God, a Holy Spirit, or something had just invaded me to give me this calmness because it went from panic and pain and exhaustion to total calmness. And God started giving me wisdom to do side strokes for a while, soft ones, and swim sideways. I have never been in that deep before. I don't know which way to go, but he gave me at that point the wisdom to understand that I can go against the swells and the waves as they build up, but maybe I can go sideways. And since the shore was in a C shape, just maybe I can make it my way somewhere. And long behold, that calmness continued with me and my body gently smoothing its way on its side, sometimes backstrokes. I tried all different combinations. When my arm got tired, I turned the other arm. Uh, When my arms got tired, I used my legs. When my legs was hurting, I used my arms. But it was very calm moments. And in my mind, Father, all the things I've done against you, all the things that I said against you, how could you even be with me at this moment? How can you even be with me? So I'm not sure at that point whether he is really 100% with me or he is going to get me through to the other end. Well, to make story short, I did make it to the shore, extremely exhausted. But I can tell you, when I felt the sand under my feet, I was in such joy. But at the same time, I was so desperate just to lay down on the sand. As soon as I got out of the water, I did that. I sat on the sand, I sat on the sand, on the sand and I was extremely exhausted, regathered myself. Now I'm trying to figure out where is my family, where I left them off. And I thought maybe just 50 feet away. I think I ended up walking about a mile and a half to get to where they were gathered. I was so excited to see them. I was so delighted to see them. Like the greatest thing just ever happened in my life, which it was. God granted me a second life, a second chance in my life. But they were just smiling normally, looking at me like, what got got into Ganon? Why he's so happy? Well, I didn't share the story with them until weeks later. But the moral of the story is, sometimes in life, we tend to go, we take risks, and we go further and further away from where God has established our roots and our foundation. And many times, we drift too far away that there's no return. And many people get lost in the world. And others, they come back. Why some come back and some doesn't come back, I don't know. Maybe God can answer that for us in heaven one day. But at that time, my life was completely away from God. It was an embarrassingly sad how far away I was from God. I broke many commandments in the Bible. I I wasn't a mean person, but I was a selfish person. It's all about joy, fun, and living life to the fullest. But here is God with all the blasphemies I've done and all the commandments commandments I broke. Why did he give me a second chance? Why does does he give you a second chance when you were once lost in the world? Why? Does God hold a grudge against us? I don't think God holds a grudge against the believers. Even though when we are sinners and deeply in sin, God knows our future, knows our hearts. God obviously knew things about me I didn't know about myself. And he felt to give me the chance, and he felt that would be worth maybe saving Ganem for greater things for his, in his life. Sometimes we get separated from God into the world, sometimes due to tragedies, uh, uh, sometimes just drugs, alcohol, 
divorce, sickness, there's all kind of factors, finances that drift us away from God. And sometimes richness and comfort and too many great things going on in our life also tend to draw us away from God. But does God hold the grudge against our sin? I think God is a merciful God. I think God is a forgiving God. I think God is God of grace, and God loves his children and never gives up on them. But he does, but he does punish the wicked. And yes, he disciplined the believers also, but he doesn't destroy us. He doesn't destroy us. Let me read a few verses to you here. I love this one from John 3.16. I think we all know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Does that sound like a God who holds a grudge? Knowing that humanity and crucifying his son and many who would reject him? No, God continued with his plan. In Luke 23, 3, 4 says, And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots of, I'm sorry, and they cast lots to divide his garments, which and related to this, but and Jesus said again, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Now, does that sound like a God who holds a grudge? When they put him on the cross, he was asking his father to forgive us. When he rose, rose from the dead, he was on a mission to teach his disciples, to turn them into witnesses, to get his word, his grace, his mercy, his commandments shared with generations and generations and generations to come. Does that sound like a God who held a grudge about his rejection or for his crucifixion? I don't think so. God is a loving God. God is a powerful God. God deals with the wicked. I say that again. But God is patient with those he loves and those that he sees. They have a future in his kingdom. We're fortunate, folks, to have the opportunity to know God and to understand him and listen to each other's testimonies and listen to sermons on the radio, on the internet, go to church. But there are so many in the world who drifted in the depth of the ocean and haven't come back yet. Some who believed and some just didn't know. Here at LLBN, our mission is to reach out to as many as we can, to cast the net and bring them and fish them back out of the world and bring them to the Lord, to bless their lives, to bring them to God's kingdom. All of us, one day soon, and I believe this with all my heart, we will meet so many that we were instrumental bringing into God's kingdom. You will meet some that were your neighbors, that it was your teaching, your kindness. The way you lived up to Christ's commandments impacted their lives. We will meet some maybe we worked with that we were influential in their faith. My point is, you never know who you can impact, who you can teach, who you can save. But you have other opportunities here at LLBN. In this season, we reach out to you and ask you to remember this ministry in your given. So LLBN can continue its 24-7 operation throughout the world with so many languages. All my colleagues here on the set are volunteers. 98% of our workforce are volunteers, or should we call them witnesses for the Lord? Join us, folks. Join us to bless others around the world and to bring them to God's kingdom. God bless you. Well, thank you, Ganem. Now, did Ganem answer the question for you? You think God holds a grudge against humans? I think the answer is pretty clear as Ganem laid it out. He really doesn't. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Right now, it's time to take a musical break. Uh, we've got some great, great young people involved in the music this evening. Tell us about them, Sheila. Well, we have Joshua um, and Tabitha and Thomas, and they will be playing um, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, the song that I uh, introduced the last time. And I just love these kids. These kids are such 
wonderful volunteers, and, and it's just wonderful to see that they dedicate their talents to, to, just, to God and to glorify his name. Wonderful music. Mm -hmm. The angels are rejoicing and clapping. <gasps> yeah, it's really nice to have young people involved in this ministry. And it's all nice to have people of my age involved uh, in this ministry. But it is especially blessed to have people of his age involved in this <laughs> ministry. <laughs> Dr. I David feel for Taylor. You. <laughs> You, uh, you, you have been a volunteer in this ministry for a long time, haven't you? Quite a while now. Yeah. Enjoying it immensely. Yeah, we're, we're so blessed to have you. Thank you. And also, the messages that you bring. You have a message today you want to share with us. Surely. What, what are you going to tattle it? The reason for the season. The reason for the season. December, a month to remember. Wow. <laughs> and I think we're halfway through it. Or almost. <laughs> Here's Dr. David Taylor with his message. Thank you so much, Marlon, for the introduction. And I'm more than happy to be here tonight on Christian Connection. And we talk about the reason for the season. We talk about December, a month to remember. Why? Why is it so important? Well, they tell me a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, use your imaginations with me. In my hand, I'm holding an egg. You see them every day. Go to the market. Go to your refrigerators. That egg. Then as you look at that egg, a fissure, a crack begins to appear and then a little beat breaks through and as the shell falls apart a little chick wide eye looks to the north looks to the south looks to the east looks to the west and he didn't like what he saw. 
The next picture, the shell goes back together again. Then you see just an egg with a crack in it. Boy, the reason for the season, that little chicken, we can learn so much from him today, 2020. We can learn so much from that little chicken. The reason for the season, it's all about Jesus Christ. And here at LLBN, we emphasize the fact about Jesus Christ. The good news, the gospel, that word gospel, before the disciples and the followers talked about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Roman power used to do that. Their gospel was spelled with a small g. The gospel we talk about is spelled with the uppercase g. There was good news about the Caesars, about Rome. Good news, what we are accomplishing. We are conquering the world. All the world is now beneath the shadow of the Roman eagle. But when Jesus Christ came, good news. Good news, I'm going to bring deliverance. Good news, I want to share with you. And he chose people like you and like me to share that good news. There's a hackneyed expression, but it says so much. Are you keeping the faith? Yes, I'm keeping the faith. Well, don't keep it. Pass it on. The good news. Share it. That little chicken, the egg, the cracked egg, the head out, eyes wide, looking north, looking south, looking east, looking west. Look to the north. Bad news. Look to the east. Bad news. Look to the west. Bad news. Look way down south. Bad news. You put it all together. North, east, west, south. That spells news. And that little chicken became an egg again in the warmth of that egg. But that little chicken made a mistake. And now LBN is here to share the good news that that little chicken needed to hear. Little chick, you look to the institutions of people. You look to institutions of higher learning. You look to communities. You run to the hills to which I lift up my eyes. Strength does not come from hills. It comes from the Lord. Little chicken, you looked every place but up. And let us look up. Because when the trump will sound, time will be no more. How many hours? How many days? Don't count the days, but so live with the good news of the gospel to make every day count in your life. You know, this idea of the season, the reason, the little chick who looked every place but up is a good lesson for us today. And that's the purpose of LLBN to share that tremendous news. A deliverer has come, and that's the reason for the season, not toys and tinsels, but it's all about that babe who grew to become a man. And as Dr. Luke say, he grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Oh, Dr. Luke looked at him carefully, and Jesus grew. One writer said when Jesus was a little boy and he would play out with his friends, 
And when the smoke from their sanctuary would ascend up, he would just suddenly stop. He knew that his life was involved in that smoke ascending. Oh, there's a reason for the season. It's about him. Well, one writer said, and he was not of the background of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, but he said when Jesus was a little boy and he and his friends would be out in the community and they were making little mud birds and mud ducks, and Jesus would make mud ducks and birds too. But his was different, this writer said. When he clapped his hand, his birds flew away. This little boy was something. And that was Mary's baby, Jesus Christ. And at LLBN, our purpose is to tell you about him and what he can do. As we heard in our first message, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And LLBN around the world, to the world's family. We share the good news, not of Rome, not of the Caesars, but of Jesus Christ himself, that babe who was born in the manger. And just let me say, you who just support us by viewing, you who will write to us and share how your life has been enriched listening to LLBN. And that's our purpose. Our purpose is to share the good news because all around us, we have bad news. How do we share that good news? I'll tell you. It's about Jesus. And if you would think of the Dodgers, the Dodger blue, oh boy, you go to first base, and that's the experience that we have with Jesus Christ. You meet him there. Lives are changed. You get a new perspective on life. You see, it is he who gives the answers and not ourselves. And then you go to second base. And there at second base, what will you find? Our neighbors. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus teaches us that we are important. We are his daughters. We are his sons. We have had that experience with him at first base. And therefore, at second base, we can have real fellowship with each other. But you can't stop at second base having fellowship. This is why we depend on you, those who view and support LLBN. Month a month. We're now down to about, what, 20-something days in December. Remember your gift to continue this ministry. When I came here, I, I smiled as I saw the structure going up. How? Because of you, LLBN, can continue its ministry. But we can't stand around on second base and say, oh, aren't we having a great time? You have to get to third base. And when you get to third base, you may have to slide in sometimes. You might skin your knees. To go into third base, you're nearing home. The reason for the season, oh, that little chick, he didn't look up. He looked every place for everything, thinking he would find the answer. And then when you Come home and go home. Oh, thank God. That's the way the games are won. That's the way the church militant will become the church victorious. That's the church, C-H-U-R. C-H. Take U-R out. You don't have church. You have you are vitally important. And so let's remember the reason for this season, it's all about Jesus. What he has done, 
He came down as a person, and we are persons. We are people. He came down as God, and he died. He died not for his sins, but for our sins. But when they placed him in that tomb, they called it a borrowed tomb. He would not be there long. That's the reason for the season. He was born and he's going to rise again. He's coming back again. And that resurrection gives you hope, gives me hope. And that's what LLBN is all about. The hope that we have from that babe who died for you and me. Sins were on him, but not in him. Sin is on you and me, in you and me, and he has come to deliver us. I thank God for the season. I thank God for the vision. LLBN prepares our world family 24-7. LLBN never forgets its purpose. It's all about him, Jesus Christ. And people say, you know, well, you live, you get older. With age, you have wisdom. But we share at LLBN. Sometimes we have age, but it comes without wisdom. And Jesus Christ is the sum total of all wisdom. And that's what he is all about. A little boy had a hard day. He was sleeping, but no, he was slumbering. Uh, he was tired, and, and the old grandfather clock began to chime, and he suddenly opened his eyes, and he began to count. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He jumped up out of his bed, ran to the room of his mother and father, and he says, Mom, Dad, it's later than it's ever been before. This season, remember, it's later than it's ever been before. The good news is about him, our Messiah, who will bring deliverance. And I thank God, as the old spiritual used to say, he holds the whole world in his hand, the God who became a person like you and me and died, but he rose again. And this gives us hope. And I thank God, LLBN, we don't forget our purpose for being to share that glorious news. God bless you real good. Amen. Amen. Dr. David Taylor, what a marvelous message you shared you. with us. And, you know, uh, what a timely message. Now, I was just thinking about your message and the message of Ganem, and I want to ask Lee, uh, are those the same messages or are they different messages? The message of God holding a grudge, does he? Or for the reason of the season? Which God do we serve? And are we serving the same one? Different sides of the same coin, Malam. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many aspects of God, many of which we don't understand. The Bible reveals that he is love, and he wants our salvation. Mm -hmm. That's why he went to the trouble, if that's the right word, of actually going to the cross. And trouble is a shallow word. Mm -hmm. you know, it's much deeper than that, that he made the decision to give up eternal life to come to earth. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. And he had assurance that he was going to go back, but he still had to go through it. Mm -hmm. And he had to live it. Well, but he also had the ability to fail. Mm -hmm. He could have failed. Yes. And then this grand experiment, where would he be? Mm -hmm. Let's not even talk about that, because it's impossible for God to fail. We, know, we already know that, right? It's going through it. You know, one writer said, he did not have that propensity, you see. That's why, have you ever been so tempted that you perspired blood? 
Have you ever been so tempted that you fell to the ground? When he was tempted, mm. Satan didn't send his imps. Satan came himself. Yes. And Jesus went through it. He was human. He needed water. He needed rest. Mm. He wept. Mm -hmm. He had the emotions. He was tempted in all points like we are. Yes. Well, how is that? He didn't have high-definition TV. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the things in the airways today, the ethers, where we're transmitting messages. But in all points, what we see, mm -hmm. what we hear, what we snip, not cocaine, what we taste, what we mm -hmm. touch, what we hear, mm -hmm. in all points, he was tempted. Yes. So he knows what we go through, mm -hmm. what we're all about. I thank God the reason for this season, Jesus, real deliverance. Amen. It makes me happy. Amen. Now, Sheila, just to carry on what he was saying about Jesus and the temptation of the great enemy, Lucifer. Now, Lucifer actually turned the word of God against Christ. And what was his only defense? The word to reply with scripture. So everything is bound up in the word. How valuable is this gift of Jesus' word to us as humanity? It's everything, you know, the gift of the word. And, you know, as Dr. Taylor was saying, you know, he was human. And he spent a lot of time with the word, praying and going alone to gain that strength from, from God, from the Word. And so the Word is everything to us because it, uh, it reminds us and reinforces the truth, which is God came from the heavenly heights to the lows of the manger and living his life, he you know, when you see how he lived as man, that he is, he came as Emmanuel, God with us. So it just, it just really, just thinking about that as what he went through and going to the cross and dying for us, that he is with us through whatever we are going through. And that was, it was said, you know, is the, the temptation of, mm -hmm. of sweating blood. I mean, that, that's a, yeah. a pretty, pretty major physical reaction to, you know, the stress of that sin and Lucifer was play, putting on Christ at that time. Gannon, what, what do you have to add? You know, that God had loved us so much. He created us. He created us, but yet he can't separate from us. It, it has certain beauty that he had to leave his kingdom to come down here and experience what we experience, to feel what we feel. That way he can, that way he can know what humanity feels. He suffered like any human being, but also beyond that. He went on the cross, not because he committed a crime, because he committed love toward humanity, because he committed an act of goodness toward humanity. And he had to die to carry our sins. To me, and, I mean, this, this season and throughout the year, this is the essence of our lives as Christians. Without knowing what he did for us and what he was willing to do, and he took it willingly and, and went on with that revenge, giving us all the freedom to choose, what makes it even more beautiful for me. He gave me the freedom is to all of us and everyone else to choose good or bad, God or the world. And he definitely does not carry a grudge because <laughs> he came from the heights of heaven right. all the way here to, be one of, to become one with us. Mm. And that's a gift that is hard mm. to, to even fathom, mm. you know. But he... The fact that he went through all that pain to free us from sin and to free us from pain mm -hmm. and anguish, to experience the joy in the Lord is immeasurable. So, Sheila, you know Jesus Christ. You know that he is, can't hold a grudge. 
But Lee, the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. is convinced that that God is a tyrant. I mean, he just waits for every mm -hmm. opportunity to send you a bolt, you know, to shock you into mm -hmm. you know, awareness of, of your sin. Is God really like that? Or does the world have the wrong impression of who God is? Well, I think the world's moved past that. They don't even believe in God. Yeah, interesting. To, yeah. to some extent. But there are people who blame God for their problems. You know, why didn't he intervene? Um, when, when Dr. Taylor mentioned about Jesus sweating drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was up against probably the most powerful being he had created. And we have no idea mm. of the power of those dark forces. Yeah. We know that God is more powerful. Yeah, but we have an indication that you know, over half of the heaven was deceived. A third, yes. Yeah, well, a third yes. actually stayed with him. Yes. But another third said, whoa, I'm being deceived. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy is our enemy. And so they repented and they yeah. and so got their former positions back. So when we, we when we look at the Prince of Darkness um, twisting things in people's lives mm -hmm. and, and thoughts, and I think a lot of problems happen because of the choices that we make. We can't blame anybody, but at the same time, God is there to walk with us, no matter what, yeah. and. If um, the forces of darkness throw bolts against some people, God's there to rescue them. Yeah. All they have to do is ask. Now, Dr. Taylor, there yes. are two classes of people. There are the children of God, and there are the children of the devil. The Bible clearly says, and they talk about you know, the, the children of disobedience. Are those people disowned by God, or is it a matter of personal choice. You hit it on the head when you said there are two classes. Class number one, sinner. Mm. Which I am. I am. We are. Mm. Class number two, sinner. Which I am still. <laughs> Saved by grace. Amen. Mm. The reason for the season. The reason. Why God came. Because when you look at the four Gospels, you look at Matthew, they will trace this babe back to Jews. Mm -hmm. When you read Matthew, lots of, some writers call it First Testament rather than Old Testament. They say when it's old, <laughs> that means it's no longer needed. Yeah. They call it first. Or New relevant. Testament. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And then when you get into Mark, no family tree. Yeah, we overpower. We are the Romans. We're, Romans. We're in power. Mm -hmm. Family tree, a slave? Huh, no. You get into loot, Gentile, traces it back to Adam, first man. Yeah, interesting how that worked out, isn't it? And look at John. Yeah. Not man, not Abraham, not Adam. In the beginning was the Word. With God was God. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the fifth gospel. The fifth gospel. That's right. That's Hebrews. Yay. Chapter 2. Amen. And then Hebrews chapter 2. He is now at the right hand of the Father, still giving us that grace. Yeah, amen. See, that's what you call eternal security. Now, isn't that exciting news, Gavin? Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that the, good, the See, best news? That, that's, that's that fifth gospel, Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And it talks about yeah. it. Yeah. You see, you have the four while he was on earth. Now you have the one while he's in heaven. Grace. You know, that's eternal security, but I don't like eternal insecurity. Now, when will he come to my name? Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, T, that's after S. No, I'm, I'm yeah. still down. Yeah, you're, 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 you're about due. Oh, but have they passed Ganem? Hannah, H-H-A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know until probation is closed for all. And then we'll find out. Because I think, you know, the story is, as long as we have breath, where there's breath, there is hope, right? We also, we can make that decision. Mm -hmm. The thief on the cross, I mean, he was, you know, hours away from dying, and he had a complete transformation. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the other one, too. 
Mm-hmm. May, may I add to the two classes of sinners? Mm-hmm. There are sinners who will always be sinners mm-hmm. and will never believe and have no hope because they've already chose their path and the Lord sees their path, see their, from, see, sees their end from their beginning. But there are the, the believers who are also sinners mm-hmm. and they sin, but they also repent and they know the difference between mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good and bad, and God stay with those sinners, gives them hope, and 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 guide them, and groom them, and help them to grow. Because if God wasn't interested in sinners, then none of us will exist. Mm-hmm. But again, there are one type of sinners. I have known some guys since they were kids. They were harsh. They were mean. They will get in fights. They will break friends apart mm-hmm. and. 30 years later, you see them in that same modality. Except you changed. You know, I didn't have a mean spirit in me. I was just lost. <laughs> I was lost. You were just... Into the world. I was just... Wicked. I was. Yeah. To me, so... Mm-hmm. But, but there are belie- all believers sin. Yeah. We, no matter how hard we work on it, no matter how we try, no matter how many times I pray today, there's always mm-hmm. that unexpected moment I ran into. Where I'm, I'm off guard and I trip again. Mm. I'm a sinner. But Proverbs has the answers. He says, when a righteous man falls, gets what does he do? He gets up. That's right. Seven times he gets up. See, part of the yeah. difference, Marlon, is people who are not saved don't want to be saved. Correct. Interesting. They lose interest in being saved. You know, that's a really <laughs> difficult concept yeah. for me to wrap my mind around. Mm-hmm. Who would decide consciously to be lost? See, and that's where the beauty of the life of Jesus comes into play. That's why I mm-hmm. use the baseball game. Yeah. You have to have that first base experience. If you don't have it, I can't love you. I can't love and appreciate you. We can't have real fellowship and get along together. That first base experience, that's where it starts, winning. My wife's father, he was quite a baseball player. He could hit a ball so far, you needed a research committee to find it. (laughs) But he couldn't run. He was slow. He would hit a single and were fearful he would be thrown out at first base. (laughs) You know? So Jesus Christ himself, what he does at that first base experience, and that's that assurance that he gives us. Ah, Lee. Mm. So just just kind of building up on the assurance that you know, Jesus gives us, it, it seems to me that people who basically become disinterested in being saved, it's not a conscious decision, it's a journey. And they keep saying no until finally there's just nowhere where they can say yes. Mm. Romans it, talks about that. When I think it's Romans 12, it talks about giving them up to their lusts. To their lusts. Because yeah. the, that's their choice that they have, have made. And yet, we know that there are some parents who are worried about their kids yeah. who may be strayed away. We know that when prayers are offered faithfully, that God's keep, God keeps working on people's hearts. We hear about deathbed conversions. Actually, the deathbed conversions are the result of somebody being, you know, the spirit working on people's hearts. Because I see very few people who've had a life where they're not interested in God on the deathbed having an interest in God. Mm. I even had a lady one day, um, you know, she introduced myself. She said, ah, I'm not into that. And I said, what are you into? She said, I'm into something totally different. I said, tell me. She said, I don't believe in any God. And she was smiling. And she died about a, a week later. She had no desire. No, I kind of joked with her, I said, I bet your friends are praying for you. And she said, oh, my Catholic husband, you know, who's a converted Christian, has been praying like crazy, but I don't want to let him down, but I'm not interested. Mm. So there are some people who, for whatever mm. reason, make choices. Mm. Well... Just, um, I, I think there's hope for your friends, Ganem, because I believe God is so desperate for us to be saved. Mm. And uh, yes. he sees our pain 
And I think people who want to bring pain on others have pain themselves that is so deep. God sees that and he knows their name. He knows your name. He knows my name. Yeah. And that's why he came to save us. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. saying that. Because yes. That's what I was saying to you. God picked you from that group, yeah. you know, and he rescued you, and it was the work of the Holy Spirit. Just like you mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. that lady, mm -hmm. you know, that didn't want to know Christ, she mm -hmm. made her decisions. Yes. But there are plenty of deathbed conversions that were only made possible by the Holy Spirit's Longing to, yes, you know, working and working over to, the years to soften their hearts. Yeah. See, that's the choice yeah. we have. God says, "Hey, you can make your choice." Yes. I would say it this way: the God who created you without you mm. cannot save you without you. Mm. Yes, yeah. Amen. Good. You have to make a decision. Amen. That's our. We point. have to surrender, and we don't like surrender. Surrender that means I lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lost all that badness and. I don't believe in a God and this and that. It had just happened. Yeah. We made a choice. And so as long as you have an open mind and you're open to hearing God's spirit, he will keep wooing until finally we make a decision yeah. or we don't. So do not, do not miss that opportunity when the Holy Spirit is wooing for you because he might just realize that your choice that you make today is gonna to be a permanent choice. So we're all the time here for the edition of uh, Christian Connections, but before we go, I'd just like to give Gavin the last word to uh, see if uh, there's anything we missed to tell you, Gavin. Well, no, you guys, amazing. You covered it very well, and, and what's so amazing that God has given us opportunities at this time and age to share his word, his word and his teaching mm -hmm. into the world. and. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for making us part of your family. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for letting us grow to reach millions upon millions around the world. This have, could not been done without your help. And I'm grateful to my friends here and all my friends out there on the floor and to all of you again for your love and support and hunger for God's word. And we really appreciate that support at this, especially at this time of the year. You know, this is the month when uh, we get the bulk of our operating uh, funds uh, that you send in uh, during uh, this time of year. And it's been a little slow, so we uh, encourage you to not wait to the last minute. Uh, do what the Holy Spirit directs you to. If he impresses you to pray, then pray with all of your heart. If he impresses you to send some cash, well, we need that to keep the operation going. Building is okay, but it needs help. The day-to-day -day operations really need help. So we thank you here at Christian Connections. Thank you for joining us on the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Mm. Next week, we'll have another edition. Mm.